The top stories tonight and why news. The camps of Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio and former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. are still in talks over the possible partnership in the 2022 elections. However, Lakas CMD President Representative Martin Lamualdez does not see any conflict should there be a face-off between the two leaders. The government will soon require on-site workers in areas with enough COVID-19 vaccine supplies to get inoculated beginning December 1. But the labor group sees the possible spike of unemployment if the mandate takes effect. Customers of Moralco will have to shell out more money to pay their electricity bills this month as the power distributor announced a new round of rate hikes. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, November 12, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. In the next hour, as we deliver today's pop stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world, I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. Lakas CMD President and House Majority Leader Martin Romualdez does, does not see any conflict should there be a face-off between his party mate Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte and his cousin, former Senator Bongbong Marcos, for the highest posts in the land. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Presidential daughter Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte and former Senator Bongbong Marcos are good friends. This is according to Lakas CMD President and later Representative Martin Romualdez when questioned on the possible conflict if the two leaders would both run for presidency. Romualdez said they are still trying to get Sara and Bongbong for a possible partnership in the 2022 polls. I don't foresee a conflict. I think um, uh, uh, Mayor Sara and uh, former Senator Bongbong Marcos are good friends. They've been communicating, um, uh, they've been in dialogue. I don't foresee them um, having a conflict. Therefore, I don't um, uh, foresee myself getting uh, caught in the middle. But for now, according to Romualdez, it is better to wait for what will happen over the weekend. Uh, the position that she will run for will be known um, uh, most likely within the weekend. Marcos has already filed the certificate of candidacy, while there are speculations that Mayor Sara would vie for a presidential or vice presidential position after quitting her regional party Hugpong ng Pagbabago and her withdrawal for re-election in Davao City. But one of the senatorial aspirants of the PDP Laban Kusi Group believes that Mayor Sara will possibly run for president. Parang lumalabas ngayon, if she's not, if he, if she did not join. Federal, how can she be the running mate of Bongo? Mm -hmm. So, kung lakas, baka she's going to run for president. Romualdez said that the Lakas CMD would want to have the highest position, but they would respect the candidate's position. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Newly appointed Philippine National Police Chief Lieutenant General Leonardo Carlos has vowed to continue the fight against communist rebels and terrorists as the elections draws near. Lea Ilagran will tell us why. Lieutenant General Junardo Carlos formally assumed command as the 27th Chief of the Philippine National Police. In his first speech, Carlos said he will strengthen area police commands to prevent insurgents, terrorists, and private armed groups from sowing terror during the elections. The fight against insurgency, terrorism, and the dismantling of private armed groups will receive a new shot, in the, new shot in the arm as we prepare for the national elections. Carlos also said that he would implement more strongly the anti-illegal drugs campaign of the government. We will implement even more strongly our enhanced managing police operations, its programs against criminality and our double barrel finale version 2021 against illegal drugs. We
We will improve these programs as necessary and introduce further reforms as needed as we strive to make more potent these tools against crime and illegal drugs. Carlos is a member of the Philippine Military Academy Maringal Class of 1988. He will serve as the chief PNP until May 8, 2022, days before the election. Hindi matatawaran ang tiwalang ibinigay ninyo sa akin at ito ibabalik ko sa pamamagitan ng pag-aalay sa inyo ng servisyong tapat, servisyong may malasakit at servisyong mula sa puso na may alagang Carlos. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte has appointed Philippine Army Commander Lieutenant General Andres Centino as the new Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP. Centino replaced General Jose Faustino Jr., who reached the mandatory retirement age of 57 on November 12, 2021, after a four-month stint as AFP chief. The palace and the AFP welcome Centino's appointment as the 57th chief of staff. The Manila Electric Company, or Meralco, announced a new round of rate hikes this November. The electric company also plans to increase every month until March 2022. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why live. So Asher, what attributed the power rate hike and why will they implement the increase monthly? Charlene, instead of a significantly higher generation charge increase this month, the Manila Electric Company staggers the upward adjustment up to the next four months. This, as Meralco announces today, the overall rate for a typical household went up due to the maintenance shutdown of the Malampaya Natural Gas Facility in October 2 to 25. But Meralco spokesperson Joe Zaldariaga explains they took the initiative to cushion the impact in the bills of its customers. Our overall rates uh, went up by 32.56 centavos per kilowatt hour. Um, due to a uh, higher generation charge para hindi naman masyadong mabigat yung impact ngayong uh, buwan ng Nobyembre, eh, minabuti namin na uh, stretch uh, yung uh, increase. No? Kasi uh, alam naman natin na talagang eh, times are difficult and uh, we just wanted to really find a way how we can help consumers no? cope. From an 81 centavo per kilowatt hour increase, Meralco stretches the adjustment until March 2021. This month adjustment equates to additional 65 to 162 pesos in Meralco bills for residential customers depending on their consumption. Meralco customers complain about the rate increase but plan to do some power saving measures. Parang mabigat na rin yan sa mga tao, lalo na sa panahon ngayon na may pandemya. Uh, yung iba, walang mga trabaho, kahit nga may negosyo ka, hindi na ganun kalakas noon nung wala pang pandemya. Bawasan na yung paggamit ng, ano, ng TV, ng electric pan, aircon. Tala lang siya, mold. at least eh, libre ka pa. Diba? Marami ka pang nakikita. <laughs> Meralco, however, reassures that they will continue to find ways to help their customers through payment arrangements and ensure no disruption of service. Harleen? Thank you. Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Kazan City. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF, has approved the mandatory vaccination of eligible on-site workers in areas where there are sufficient supplies of COVID-19 vaccines. However, labor groups express their opposition to the vaccine mandate. Rosa Dicos explains why. Starting December 1, 2021, Eligible on-site workers, both in the public and private sectors, are required to get vaccinated against COVID-19. But this will apply for areas with sufficient COVID-19 vaccine supplies. The new measure is in compliance with the directives of President Rodrigo Duterte to intensify the country's vaccination drive. Kabilin dito ang pag-require ng mga establishmento at employers sa public at private sector sa mga lugar na may sapat na supply ng COVID-19 vaccine 
na magpapabakuna ng kanilang eligible employees na nasa on-site work. The palace official stressed that employees who remain to be unvaccinated may not be terminated, but they shall be required to undergo regular RT-PCR testing or antigen tests at their own expense. Meanwhile, public transportation services shall likewise require the full vaccination of their eligible workers to continue their operations, while public and private establishments may validly refuse entry or service to an individual who remain unvaccinated or partially vaccinated despite being eligible for vaccination. On the other hand, frontline and emergency services will continue to render assistance to all persons regardless of their vaccination status. Meanwhile, the Associated Labor Unions, Trade Union Congress of the Philippines or ALU-TUCP, opposes the vaccine mandate. The group insists this is against the rights of the workers and may lead to job loss. Maaring mangyari iyon, uh, lalong-lalo na yung tinatawag na demoralization. No? Pati demoralize ang mga manggagawa, lalong-lalo na yung may mga medical conditions, may mga personal and religious beliefs. Uh, laban sa vaccination, magkakaroon ng girian at uh, demoralization sa mga on the part ng mga manggagawa. Magkakaroon din ng underemployment at uh, malawak ang uh, unemployment dito. For the employer's part, this policy may lead to more vaccination hesitancy in the country, though they are willing to implement this. The confusing na yung mga nasa-delict to it. They should suspice na tuloy mga tao. Kaya tumataas yung mga mga nag-hesitancy eh. Iba-iba yung sinasabi nila eh. Dapat yung messaging, isa lang. Huwag mong pilitin yung aya dahil problema niya yun. According to the palace, those who are ineligible for vaccination only have to present a medical clearance issued by a government health office or birth certificate. Meanwhile, the IATF has called on local government units to issue orders or ordinances providing incentives for fully vaccinated individuals and for business establishments to require proof of vaccination before individuals may undertake or qualify for certain activities. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health admits that there has been a delay in the delivery of new supplies of syringes for COVID-19 mRNA vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Health Department allays worries, saying they have secured supply of COVID-19 syringes as early as May this year. Health Spokesperson Under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergeres said they have ordered regional units to use tuberculin syringe instead of 0.3 ml syringe used for COVID-19 vaccination as there is an existing global shortage. Tuberculin syringe are used for tuberculosis tests but can be used in place of 0.3 ml syringe as it is also appropriate for mRNA vaccines like Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines. Kaya po, noong June, inutusan na po natin ang ating mga regional units uh, na maaari muna nilang gamitin yung mga tuberculin syringe instead of this uh, uh, kulang na mga 0.3 ml syringe. For the other types of vaccine, wala po tayong problema kasi marami po tayong commodities that are in our storage facilities na maaring gamitin para po dun sa mga ibang klaseng requirements for other vaccines. Under Secretary Vergere also said they have coordinated with the United Nations Children's Fund or UNICEF to have additional supply and ordered millions of it. This is to prevent any supply shortage as vaccination coverage in the country will reach more sectors in 2022. We have ordered 44 million 0.3 ml syringes from the UNICEF at the outset. No? Pero ngayon, katulad nga ng sabi ko, Aiko, uh, when the WHO already informed us unofficially, uh, minubilize na namin yung aming pharmaceutical division, Food and Drug Administration, and our Disease Prevention and Control Bureau. However, the DOH admits because there is a global shortage, they are experiencing delivery delays of the said syringe. Ito pong 0.3 ml syringes na specifically ginagamit po for mRNA vaccines, ito po ang nagkukulang and a shortage din globally talaga. So as early part of this year, we already have placed our orders and our procurement process through the UNICEF. But hanggang sa ngayon, medyo nagkakaroon ng delays ang kanilang delivery sa atin and this is because of the apparent global shortage na sinasabi. 
On the other hand, the DOH also assures there are enough syringe for routine immunization, particularly for children and other health services. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Science and Technology is currently holding training and virtual site initiation visits in various areas, including Manila, Marikina, Montinlupa, Das Marinas, and Davao City. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. While waiting for the final approval of the Food and Drug Administration, the Department of Science and Technology is gearing up for its clinical trial for mix-and-match COVID-19 vaccines. The clinical trial aims to determine the effectivity of using a different brand of COVID-19 vaccine for the second dose or booster shot. DOST Undersecretary for Research and Development Dr. Rowena Guevara said, Manila, Marikina, Muntinlupa, Desmariñas in Cavite, and Davao City are among the trial sites where the clinical study will be conducted. However, they have not yet recruited participants since there is still no final approval from the FDA. Sa kasalukuyan, hindi pa tayo nagre-recruit kasi inyaantay namin ang final approval FDA bago tayo magsimula ng pagbabakuna. Ngunit ang project team ay handa naman na. Guevara said unvaccinated individuals aged 18 and above are eligible to participate in the clinical trial. Pregnant women and those who have contracted COVID-19 will not be able to join the study. For women who can get pregnant but still interested to participate should take contraceptives before getting vaccinated for the trial. Those with comorbidities may join the trial, provided that they are in a medically stable condition with clearance from their doctors. Once the clinical trial begins, participants will be divided into three groups with the first group to be vaccinated with Sinovac vaccines for the first and second dose. The second group will receive Sinovac for the first dose and a different brand such as Pfizer-BioNTech, Moderna, AstraZeneca, or Sputnik V for the second dose. For the third group, they will receive Sinovac for their first and second dose and another brand for their booster shot. Yung isang grupo na pag-aaral ay bibigyan ng Sinovac at Sinovac lang. Tapos yung pangalawang grupo naman, uh, madami sila, no? bibigyan ng Sinovac bilang first dose. Tapos 250 bibigyan ng Pfizer, Biotech, uh, Moderna, o AstraZeneca, o Sputnik V bilang second dose. Yung pangatlong grupo naman ang meron third dose o booster. Sinovac ang ibibigay na unang at second dose, tapos Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, o Sputnik V ang gagamitin na third dose. Once the vaccination is completed, the DOSD will release its preliminary findings to determine which pair of COVID-19 brand would provide a more effective protection against COVID-19. Ang pagbabakuna ay tatagal lamang ng hanggang limang buwan, ngunit ang mga participants ay follow up at pangangalagaan na ng project team na binubuo ng medical experts ng hanggang isang taon. Inaasahang may unang interim analysis o preliminary results na kapag nakapag-enroll na tayo ng 1,000 participants, inaasahan nating makamit yawa hanggang tatlong buwan. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, a two-year-old kid tested positive in a COVID-19 rapid antigen test after reportedly visiting a mall. JP Nunez details why. A recent Facebook post of a doctor caused netizens to worry after two-year-old tested positive from COVID-19. The result came three days after the boy reportedly went to a mall. Department of Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Berjere said in a statement that there are factors to consider and the cause of the infection remains uncertain. Berjere further reminds parents to take extra caution when bringing their children in public spaces. Meanwhile, Department of the Interior and Local Government Secretary Eduardo Año says they will instruct Metro Manila mayors to reconsider the age restriction inside malls. According to Año, local government units may impose restrictions as the necessity occurs. While COVID cases are decreasing, pandemic is still present. As of now, minors are still allowed inside malls accompanied by their parents. 
Meanwhile, other parents still believe that children must still be restricted in public places despite easing up restrictions. Sa aking palagay, eh, huwag na muna. Huwag na muna ilabas sa mga bata, lalo na sa mga mall, sa lahat ng mga playgrounds, lalo na ngayon, mayroon pa tayong natitirang uh, pandemic, lalo na. Maapektuhan lalo tayo pag di natin sinunod. Sa mga magulang, iistis muna. Kung ako tatanungin, uh, ayoko pa. Kasi hindi pa tayo COVID free. Mamaya, pag pinalabas mo na, magkahawa-hawa ka mo naman, mas lalo na namang ilalaki ang problema ng Pilipinas. Kaya, hindi ko tayo sa mga. Palalabasin ko lang sila sa labas lang ng bahay. Ganun lang ang feeling. Um, siguro, wag muna. Kasi, May COVID pa rin tayo eh. Authorities still encourage parents to get their children 12 to 17 year old to get vaccinated against COVID-19. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Education is all set for the pilot's implementation of face-to-face -face classes in public schools beginning Monday, November 15. Meanwhile, more schools will be included in the pilot run. Janice and Henter reports why. With almost two years of no physical classes in schools due to COVID-19 pandemic, students from 100 schools who passed the DOH risk assessment are set to go back to their schools on Monday, November 15. But the number of students allowed to enter physically in school is still limited. Based on the Department of Education guidelines, only 12 to 20 students per classroom will be allowed in kinder, grades 1 to 3, and senior high school. 100 pilot schools are all set to conduct physical classes on Monday. Uh, at kami naman for our part sa Department of Education, ini-inspect namin ang mga napipiling eskwelahan na kailangan uh, handa yung ating mga facilities, ang social distancing, may tubig, may gamot, malapit tayo sa mga health stations. Mm -hmm. Very high ang uh, uh, vaccination uh, status. I see you, Sika Alain, uh, pwede magbigay uh, ng karagdagang informasyon. Pero uh, napakataas kasi ano pa, uh, summer pa, wala pa yung approval ng President. Sinabihan na namin yung aming mga teachers na makikilahok sila. Meanwhile, on November 22, physical classes are expected to begin for 20 private schools. According to the Department of Health, 484 out of 638 nominated schools passed their granular risk as minimal or low risk. The Education Department will release the final list of additional pilot schools soon. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines recorded 1,894 new cases of the novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19, pushing the nationwide case count to 2,813,115. In its latest bulletin, the Department of Health or DOH said that the number of active cases in the country stood at 29,105. 63% of the active cases have mild symptoms. 16.70% were in moderate condition. 10.2% have severe symptoms and 5.7% were asymptomatic, 4.4% were in critical condition. Meanwhile, 1,421 new survivors were logged. This brought the recovery tally to 2,738,975. The death toll, however, climbed to 45,035 after 170 more patients died. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has stopped 251,973,249. While the deaths have surged to 5,080,852, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 46,852,796 and 759,677, respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infection, India follows with 34,414,186 cases and 462,690 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 
224 fatality. With the recent developments in the political arena as the deadline of substitution looms, the Kusi faction of ruling party PDP Laban is now exploring its options, including the Go Duterte tandem for 2022 polls. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. With only three days left for substitution of candidates, the faction in PDP Laban, headed by Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi, is reassessing its moves for the upcoming elections. This, as the Cusi faction revealed, they are now exploring all options, including its original plan of fielding Senator Christopher Bongo and President Duterte as its presidential and vice presidential bets. In a statement, the Cusi wing says they are consulting their local leaders to ensure that the party decision will be reflective of the sentiments on the Ground. The Cusi faction standard bearer, Senator Ronald De La Rosa, has yet to comment on the matter. But the senator has been vocal that he is willing to withdraw if presidential daughter and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio will run for the presidency. Presidential aspirant Senator Manny Pacquiao, who also sits as the party president of Pacquiao Pimental Wing, is not affected by the possible Go Duterte tandem, saying that everyone has the right to run. The senator also clarified he will not abandon their group in the ruling party and will continue fighting for their claim as the legitimate representatives of the party. This despite his recent meeting with President Duterte, who chairs the other faction in PDP Laban. Magkaisa pa rin kami, magkaisa kami. Actually, na-surprise lang naman ako sa patawag eh. Uh, hindi naman intensyon na ano, wala naman na, sino ba naman ako para tumanggi sa Pangulo. Ipinaglalaban namin yung uh, PDP, la, P, PDP party na yan. Dahil yung uh, iba, mga illegal, kami may hawak ng uh, data uh, Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel, who chairs the Pacquiao Pimentel Wing, has no comment on the meeting of the two leaders. As the November 15 deadline substitution nears, Pacquiao remains firm that his presidential bid is final. Hindi ako trapo na politiko na pabago-bago ng desisyon. Kung uh, yung iba dyan trapo, pabago-bago ng, ng desisyon, niloloko yung taong bayan, ako hindi. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Commission on Elections has summoned presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbo Marcos Jr. in connection with a petition for the cancellation of his certificates of candidacy. Meanwhile, several parlous groups filed for substitution days before the deadline. Dante Amento gives us the details live. Yes, Dante, good evening. Good evening, Harleen. Commission on Elections spokesman Director James Jimenez disclosed the summons for presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. was issued yesterday and expected to be served today. Comelec will have to wait for proof of service. Jimenez added Marcos is given five days upon receipt of the summons to respond to the petition filed seeking the cancellation of his COC. Failure to respond within the period given Bar Marcus's come to submit controverting evidence. UNTV News is getting Marcus's spokesperson attorney Vic Rodriguez confirmation, but no reply yet. Meanwhile, some party list groups filed COC withdrawal and a substitution today, such as Malasakit Movement with former MMDA spokesperson Celine Pialago as first nominee. Si Mr. Avancena po has been our chairman ever since naman po. And the uh, decision naman po ng uh, buong members po yon at finally po inaccept naman po ni Mr. Avancena yung aming offer po sa kanya. Four piece party list which one of the nominees is sibling of MMDA chairman Benhar Abalos Jr. has withdrawn from his nomination for allegedly health problem. I cannot disclose. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm the number two nominee. I'm with, uh, withdrawing my uh, nomination and I'm recommending uh, another uh, substitute nominee, which is Jonathan Abalos, the second. 
Harlinda processing of withdrawal and substitution of COC would continue tomorrow and the last day would be on Monday, November 15. And that's our latest live from Quezon City. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live from Quezon City. And in other news, the Department of Foreign Affairs raised crisis alert level for our mandatory evacuation for overseas Filipinos in Ethiopia. This is due to continued and intensifying conflict in the African nation. The DFA advised against traveling to the Eastern African nation and asked Filipinos residing there to restrict non-essential movements, avoid public places, and immediately prepare for evacuation. Filipinos in Ethiopia who need assistance may contact the Philippine Embassy in Cairo, Egypt at uh, uh, 202-252-13062 or through its Facebook page. They may also contact the Philippine Consul in Addis Ababa by email or by telephone at uh, 251-1118-648-752. And for the news abroad, the ruling Communist Party adopted a landmark resolution strengthening Chinese President Xi Jinping's status and future in the country. Nerissa Dando details why, live. Yes, Nerissa? Good evening, Kath. A rare resolution, only the third in China's history, has been approved on Thursday by the country's ruling Communist Party. This raises President Xi Jinping's status due to his contributions to the country's success. This declaration also puts the Chinese president in the same category as Mao Zedong, founder of modern China, and Deng Xiaoping, the country's economic reformer. In an official announcement, after a high-profile meeting of 348 party members, President Xi's core position was assessed and recognized. Moreover, the president was also credited for his ideologies known as Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. In a local footage of the meeting, delegates seated in rows facing the Chinese leader voted for the resolution by show of hands. Meanwhile, the 20th Party Congress next year is deemed to be a major event in the nation's political life, but no further details have been disclosed. Kath? Nerissa, this is indeed a big move by China to pass a rare resolution, but has this decision been well received? Kath, after China's amendment to remove presidential term limits on 2018, this move is seen by some critics as putting groundworks to secure an unprecedented third term for the Chinese president. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Nerissa Danda, reporting live from Japan. Just days before his virtual meeting with the Chinese president, U.S. President Joe Biden signs a legislation against Chinese telecommunication companies. Annie Mantilla will tell us why, live. Good evening, Annie. Good evening, Cass. In efforts to restrict the movements of Chinese tech companies deemed a threat to the U.S. national security, Biden signed the Secure Equipment Act. The U.S. Senate together approved the legislation on the 28th of October, ultimately preventing Chinese telecom companies deemed as danger from receiving new licenses from regulators. Such insecure companies were revealed in March by the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, and they were Huawei, ZTE, Hytera Communications Corp., Hangzhou HIK Vision Technology, and Shenzhen Taowa Technology with a new legislation equipment that is perceived to have high risk to the nationwide security will not be reviewed or approved by the FCC. However, the spokesperson for China's Foreign Ministry, Chao Li Zhang, says that this is an abuse of the U.S. power as they suppress Chinese companies without any evidence. Ka? Annie, what is the basis for these companies being considered as a threat to national security? Well, Kath, um, the explanation for bearing the companies indicated they had ties with the Chinese Communist Party who threat to exploit the network vulnerabilities and take advantage of America's critical communications infrastructure. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Annie Mantilla, for that live report. 
Austria is just days away to placing tougher restrictions on millions of unvaccinated Austrians. Chancellor Alexander Schallenberg said a national lockdown for the unvaccinated was probably inevitable. Jane Robles tells us why, live. Jane? Gas? A record high of 11,975 COVID infections were detected in the past 24 hours across the country, with Upper Austria having the highest level of infection and the lowest vaccination rate. Austria's seven-day incidence rate is far higher than in neighboring Germany, which recorded more than 50,000 infections Thursday. Health Minister Jens Spahn warned of a looming pandemic of the unvaccinated. While well, Chancellor Schallenberg believed that two-thirds of the Austrians should not suffer because of others were hesitant. Now Upper Austria is waiting for the go-ahead of the federal government on the implementation of the lockdown on Monday. Unvaccinated people will in effect be barred from restaurants, hotels, cinemas, theaters in the state of Brandenburg. They can only leave home for essential reasons like going to work, buying food and exercising. Kath? Thank you, Jane Robles, reporting live from Vietnam. A government council in Malaysia said that the country could reopen its borders to foreign tourists by January 1, 2022, in order to revive its tourism sector. Former Prime Minister and Chairman of the National Recovery Council, Muyedin Yassin, said that safety measures such as COVID-19 tests will remain in place and the need to determine which countries will be allowed to enter the Southeast Asian nation. Businesses have slowly been reopening to restart the country's economy due to the steady drop of daily infections of COVID-19. Meanwhile, Langkawi Island, a resort island in Malaysia, will be accepting fully vaccinated tourists from select countries without quarantine starting this Monday, November 15. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Kat Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 15, it says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. And those are the reasons behind the news, November 12, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. I don't foresee a conflict. I think um, uh, uh, Mayor Sara and uh, former Senator Bongo Marcos are good friends. They've been communicating. Um, uh, they've been in dialogue. I don't foresee them um, having a conflict. Therefore, I don't um, uh, foresee myself getting uh, caught in the middle. Parang lumalabas ngayon, if she's not, if, he, if she did not join federal, how can she be the running mate of Bongo? Mm -hmm. So, kung lakas, baka she's going to run for president. Kabilin dito ang pag-require ng mga establishmento at employer sa public at private sector sa mga lugar na may sapat na supply ng COVID-19 vaccine na magpapabakuna ng kanilang eligible employees na nasa on-site work. Maaring mangyari iyon, lalong lalo na yung tinatawag na demoralization. Pati demoralize ang mga magagawa, lalong lalo na yung may mga medical conditions, may mga personal and religious beliefs. Uh, laban sa vaccination, magkakaroon ng girian at uh, demoralization sa mga, on the part ng mga manggagawa. Magkakaroon din ng underemployment at uh, malawakang uh, unemployment ito.